you think that cry it out methods damage attachment? Now that's a question that I just can't wait to answer for you because actually the first thing to establish is what does one even mean by cry it out methods? So stay tuned because in this video I'm going to break it all down for you, clear up any confusion and hopefully reassure you with your choices going forwards. But before I get into that, please could you do me a favour? Could you just like this video and subscribe to my channel? Because by doing that, you help us get more visible and more exhausted parents can see what we do and hopefully get the answers they need to get a better night's sleep. So pay it forward, share this video and subscribe to the channel and you'll be really helping out a lot of people. Okay, so let's get into it about cry it out methods and attachment. So first of all, what is meant by cry it out? When we talk about cry it out, the traditional and scientific actual variation of that is extinction. And it's an old fashioned method that was published in books of the 1950s. And it pretty much is what it says, extinction. You put your baby down, you say goodnight, you walk away and you don't respond to any of those cries. You just don't respond to any cries. And that um, extinction approach is basically leaving your baby to cry it out. As in, they're just going to cry it out till they're all out of cry and fall asleep. My uh, belief behind that is that the child, mm, they don't really learn a lifelong skill. They just kind of learn that, well, no one's coming, so I may as well go to sleep. And that's kind of sad. And not many parents are particularly comfortable with that. In terms of evidence to, to prove that it's damaging or has any impact on attachment is variable. There's not really any real conclusive evidence. There have been some studies that have shown that prolonged periods of unresponded crying, more than 30 minutes, and doing this re regularly could have an impact. But that's about it. It's actually you know, really inconclusive. But as I say, who wants to really do that? I, I don't, and I don't really know anyone that does, and it's certainly not something we advise, and it's also not something anyone needs to be advised on. The tricky thing and the confusing thing is that now, lots of parents are using this language of cry it out just when any crying happens. So they're sort of going, oh, well, I'm doing some sleep training, and my baby's crying, and they just kind of think it's cry it out. It, it's not. Crying is normal for all human beings. <laughs> so crying isn't the problem and crying when learning to settle to sleep isn't a problem. So crying isn't the same as cry it out. And some approaches to sleep training will involve being with your child continually and they might cry continually while you're there, but they also might cry continually if you're not sleep training and you're literally cuddling them and hoping they'll go to sleep and rocking them for hours and hours and they might just keep crying the whole time till they fall asleep anyway. And you're not actually consciously doing any kind of sleep training. So when you look at uh, the terminology of cry it out, I think it's really important to understand what it actually means. And so a baby crying isn't um, cry it out. There are really popular, uh, well-known approaches like FERBA. Um, you know, I talk about the fade out and I talk about regulated responding and all these approaches have been shown to be super, super effective. But that doesn't mean any of them are okay for anyone. It's important to match up the right approach to helping your child learn how to sleep with the child, with the individual, and with the parent because if the parent's mindset and the parenting style doesn't align and the child's personality doesn't align it's not going to work but it's not the approach that's wrong it's just the marrying up of the approach with the with the scenario there are many safe and effective uh, excellent ways to help little ones learn how to sleep really really healthily and none of them will damage attachment so long as the child's being responded to so just know that if you're responding to your child, how you respond may need to look completely different for you than it does for your best friend. But so long as you are responding, 
in some way you are totally meeting your little one's needs and if you're doing that you're not going to damage any kind of attachment it's like saying if my child throws a tantrum in the shop because i say they can't have sweeties today does that damage our attachment no of course it doesn't it just frustrates your child temporarily because they're not happy with your decision in that moment but it doesn't damage your attachment and so just remember that once the needs are very different go and check out that video if you want to learn more about that because it's really really key um, but if you're responding in your approach to helping your little one learn how to sleep then you will not damage attachment at all uh, in fact there's a very good chance you will reinforce a really really healthy attachment because when your little one can count on you to deliver the same response every time when they can trust you that you mean what you say whether they like it or not that actually really creates a very healthy attachment a real sense of trust a reliability on you like i said they might not like your answer or your response but they can count on it they can rely upon it they know you mean what you say and that you'll always deliver but be careful know what cry out actually means and what it doesn't mean and then move forward with the right sleep training approach for you and for your little one